I don't think you guys are ready for this one. We're gonna show you how to create a totally custom honeycomb wall using our concrete overlay wall kits. And I just got word from the marketing team, this video is gonna be epic. Let's go check it out. All right, so we're ready to put the design on the wall. Now, what we went with was a honeycomb design, and it's gonna look absolutely stunning when we're done. The easiest way we could think of to get this design on the wall, since it's such a large wall, is we took an aluminum panel. These, this is an aluminum panel. It has two sheets of thin aluminum on the outside, and then on the inside, it has a foam core. So it's pretty rigid, it's really light, perfect application um, for what we're doing. And then we had a local sign shop cut out the honeycomb design. So if you guys wanna do this, call a, call a sign shop, a print shop. A lot of times they'll be able to do this for you. And I'll kind of show you what we did. So we obviously stuck this on the wall. As you can see, we've already started here. So since it's light, I can get it lined up, get it level, and then I can tape it up on the wall and it'll stay there because it's not heavy. So that's kind of how we got to this point. We used a pencil to mark off all of the honeycomb designs. And then when we had them cut them out, we had them make the grout lines or in between the honeycombs, the width of, I think this is an inch and a half, um, something close to that, not exactly sure. Um, but that makes it really easy to tape it off. And also when you're doing your pencil marks, it's gonna push it out a little wider, which is perfect because we wanna cover up those pencil lines. We don't want those to show. So now when we coat this, all these pencil lines that are inside the blue tape are gonna be covered by the overlay. If you guys have a painted wall that's textured and maybe say you have a white painted wall and you wanna do white grout lines in it, you can do your pattern on that painted wall just like we did here. So just picture this black is your painted wall right now. You can trace out your design tape off your pattern, and then use our prep replacement primer to lock everything in. And that's gonna get you the bond between our overlay and your painted wall. And then you can just do your overlay instead of doing an actual concrete overlay on the whole wall to get your design. So our overlays can go right over textured painted walls, drywall, sheetrock, whatever. It can go over anything. All right guys, as you can see, we got the design finished. What we have to do now is since we're not coating anywhere outside of the, the honeycombs, we wanna plastic tape those areas off because we are gonna be coating this, it's gonna to wanna to drip. So I'm gonna show you guys a really fast way to tape off a design like this. We're just gonna lay plastic from the top, let it drape down, and then I'm gonna go around and cut out around it. And as I'm cutting, someone's gonna go and tape to seal all that off. And so the only thing when we coat, the only thing where product's gonna go is everywhere the plastic is not. So it's a really fast way to do it. Before you get to this point, you wanna make sure you've pressed down all your tape really well. We like to use the roller that you guys saw earlier. Roll it down really good, make sure you got a nice tight seal. And then we're also gonna be doing uh, another black layer to lock all this in so we don't get any bleed marks. And we'll show you guys that when we get to that point.
I'm Tim Crumlin, one of the founders of Ligari Products. We spent the last three years building an extensive online training for the coding industry. It's called Ligari Academy. And the best part, it's affordable. But trust me, affordable doesn't mean cheap. It took over 20,000 man hours and over half a million dollars to create. There's absolutely not a better training anywhere for the coding industry. It doesn't exist. But it's not just the training. See, Ligari Products offers unparalleled support long after the training, as you build your business. Here at our headquarters, we've kind of made it really clear to everyone. We're only successful if we can make you successful. So put us to the test. Join the Academy today and get a partner that actually cares about your success. Welcome to the Academy. All right, so we're ready for the next step. Now, before we start coding this, I kind of want to go over a few things. Obviously, this is our concrete overlay over the wood. If you guys are going over your painted walls, textured walls, you're going to want to do this step because you have a texture that you're trying to tape and not get any bleed marks. So a lot of times, professional painters, when they're doing nice, intricate lines uh, on painted walls, textured walls, they'll tape off their design, and then they'll take the same paint color that's behind the tape and they'll paint over the tape line. What that does is that locks in the tape and minimizes or eliminates bleed marks that you're gonna get. So we're gonna do this. We don't necessarily need to do it because we got a smooth flat wall with our concrete overlay, but I wanna do it just to show you guys. We're gonna be using our scratch coat in black, but this would be the same thing you would do if you were just using paint. You would just wanna seal up all your edges. That way when you do the concrete overlay, you don't get any bleed marks. And then the bleed marks that you do get from painting over the tape, they're the same color as your background, so you'll never see them. So it's a cool little tip, um, and we recommend doing that whenever you're uh, taping a design or a pattern on a painted textured wall that has a little bit of texture to it. So we've got everything plasticed off, floors plastic. We plasticed off all the spots that we do not want to coat, and then now I'm gonna mix up our black scratch coat, and I'm just gonna roll it on, and that's gonna seal up the wall. If you have since it's such a large wall, I'm gonna roll it. If it's a smaller wall or a smaller design you're doing, you can just take a paintbrush, paint in the edges. But again, pretty big wall. I'm just gonna roll it on, it's gonna go fast. So we have our concrete overlay here. We have our black polymer already pre-measured. And then our concrete overlay scratch coat. It's like a paste. So Ryan's gonna mix this up for me. And then I'm just gonna apply it, dip and roll like you would paint. Nine inch roller, three eighths nap. All right, now we're ready for our first texture coat. We're gonna be doing gray on this, and this might seem like a lot of work, but it's actually not. You can get to this point in about a day. I mean, we're probably, like I said, two and a half, three hours to tape the design. We maybe had another hour in doing this plastic, um, and then obviously rolling on the black was fast. So theoretically, we're probably four hours max, four and a half hours. So. It seems like a lot, but it's not, and to become as custom as it's about to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up our gray texture coat. So this was our black scratch coat. It didn't have any uh, aggregate or crushed marble. So this coat's gonna have the crushed marble, so it's gonna completely cover the black and give us a gray surface. And then I'm probably gonna do two of these coats because I want these honeycombs to be pretty thick and chunky so they really pop out of the wall. So what I have here is uh, 250 square foot overlay kit. We have 2.5 gallons of our liquid polymer, and then we have one bag of uh, texture coat, and it's gray. The, the bags come in gray or white. So what I can do is I can dump this bag into here. Now when you're dumping into the polymer bucket, it's gonna fill it all the way up. So we wanna kinda mix it slow. It's sometimes good to even have another bucket to dump into, because again, it's gonna fill this thing all the way up, and it's always good to mix outside or wear a mask, last thing you wanna do is be breathing in 
a bunch of concrete dust. So we're pretty much ready to go. Um, we're gonna apply it the same way that we did the, the black scratch coat. But instead of leaving it, I'm gonna take the squeegee and I'm gonna flatten it off. And then that's gonna give us um, a nice even profile and it will completely cover the black. We might have some scratch marks in it, but you guys will kind of see it's pretty fast. So what you wanna do is start at the top, work down, because if I start at the bottom and work up, every time I keep moving up, I'm gonna be dripping onto the stuff that I've already flattened off the squeegee. So always start at the top and work your way down. All right, now that we have the wall dry, ready to be coated again, we're gonna mix the same exact way we did on this coat. So one bag, two and a half gallon polymer, and we're gonna apply it the same way. There's just a few things I wanna go over before we start. Um, one of those is we don't wanna be rubbing on this plastic very much because it'll start to peel chunks off. So when we're applying this next coat, we're gonna be more cautious of where we put the product, try to keep it on the area where the overlay's at and not so much on the plastic. Another thing is we're gonna be doing another texture coat. If you guys wanted to make your honeycombs or whatever design you have a smooth finish, you would sand this coat and then apply the scratch coat. So we wanna have more contrast between our black wall because again, our black wall's smooth, it's flat. We wanna have this more rough, more textured. It's gonna create a cool contrast between the grout lines and the background. So again, if you want a smooth honeycomb, you would just sand this, do our scratch coat, don't do the texture coat and you'll get a smooth wall. Um, the next thing is now that this is really porous, the, the scratch coat, the black that we rolled on, isn't, isn't porous, right? It's not as porous, it's not opened up. You can see how opened up this is. So this is gonna suck the moisture out of our overlay a lot more than it did when we went over the smooth black. So I'm gonna hydrate. We're gonna spray some water. We're gonna hydrate this, lightly mist it as we're coating. And you guys are gonna see all this when we do it. And then the last thing, um, we're gonna cut our squeegee down a little smaller so we can get into these tight areas without coming out onto the plastic as much. Now, if we knock some chunks off, whatever, we can deal with it, but we just wanna minimize that. Um, and you guys can also do thicker mill plastic in between here as well. This is just thin painter's plastic. If you guys are worried about it, do some thicker plastic um, and you're not gonna have a, a chance of maybe ripping through it. I think we're fine on this, but if we did it again, I probably would do a thicker mill plastic just to be safe, not have to worry about it. So what we'll do is we'll get this mixed up and then we'll start showing you how to apply it. And then the last thing, when I'm doing my finished pass with the squeegee, as you can see, it's kind of all random like the chatter marks. We're gonna get some chatter marks and stuff. I wanna make sure my passes are all random. I don't wanna pull it the same way every time. The more random, the better it's gonna look.
I'm always checking back after a do a section because sometimes you'll get, maybe you'll get some thick overlay here and it'll kind of droop down. You want to make sure you hit those. If you guys miss those, you can always sand them down. But obviously if you can hit them while it's still wet, flatten it off, it's going to make, make it a lot easier. So we're going to let this set up and dry and then uh, the fun part starts when we're pulling all the tape and, and revealing the actual design. So we'll probably let this sit for an hour, hour to two hours, uh, and we'll start pulling the, all the plastic and grout lines.